Right muckers, welcome back. Now in the last video, you'll have seen we got the Ford 3000 here. We got that uh, turning over and then running. And uh, the next stage really for this is to, so we can get it moving. See so if the brakes are free, see so if the clutch is free and stuff like that. But before we do that, in the comments in the last video, um, when we started this, uh, we used a, you know, a couple of squirts of uh, starting fluid, ether. Uh, because uh, it's been stood for so long we've primed it so far and there isn't a hand prime on this so it just gets it going gets a bit of heat and then just to get it um, up and running and uh, oh, it started you know people sort of saying oh now you've done that you'll be using ether for the rest of its life it'll become addicted to it and all this sort of stuff and um, then you start getting the other comments coming out and you read them and you sort of read the same thing over and over and it's because you know, somebody hears something in a bar or, you know, something they heard years ago. Some guy told me this and this, that and the other. And it's all secondhand info most of the time. Um, and they put it on the internet as gospel, you know, as fact. Um, most of which is absolute bollocks. So what I want to do today is um, look at the whole use of starting fluid and ether. Well, this has stood here now a week. Um, I haven't run it. Uh, it's today temperature wise it's about five degrees celsius which is cold on the old hands um as i said it's not freezing but you certainly won't be running around in a you know t-shirt and shorts um so what i'm going to do is see if we can fire this up now there's no heater plugs on this they weren't fitted um in the manifold you could get a, an adaption there was an option you could have one in the in the manifold inlet manifold this one doesn't have it so she's got no cold start aids um at all so uh it's a straight cold start with this and i fitted a new ignition switch because you remember somebody had pulled the old one out and snapped the key off in it so i've just fitted a new one of them just now and i've got power to it got light on so that should work from in there now um so yeah let's uh wind it over and um see if she starts or if she's become addicted to ether So there is the new ignition switch. Let's see what happens. So there you go, she started without ether. So it hasn't become addicted, has it? You know, engine technology has moved on so much further in, in the last sort of 15, 20 years. So, you know, nearly all diesel engines now, they didn't used to be, but they are now direct injection. Um, heaters, you know, the heater systems, block heaters, head heaters, the lot, they're so, so much more advanced and work so much more, you know, um, efficiently. Looking back at the older engines though, Manufacturers, they actually uh, fitted ether on a lot of engines. I'm talking the likes of Perkins, Cummins, um, Cat, uh, then manufacturers such as John Deere on their tractors. John Deere would have it. Uh, Farmall, Oliver, uh, Alice, people like that. They actually fitted ether systems to the machines uh, for cold climates and stuff. And to be fair, if you honestly believe that ether uh, should never be used on an engine, never use it then don't, because you obviously don't understand ether and how to use it, so step away from the can. Right, let's have a look. Why would you use ether in the first place? Stick with me, you guys know this, but we'll just go through it very simply. Unlike a gasoline engine where you've got a spark plug to ignite the fuel source, with diesel, diesel needs um, pressure, which is obviously on the you know, compression stroke, it needs heat. So. When that's injected, it's atomized with the heat and the pressure, it ignites. Now, 
you can have that done on your initial start with the heaters, but when it's really cold, heaters don't always work. And as we said, some engines don't actually have heaters. So what you need is a, a fuel source just to get that to, to ignite a little bit sooner and get the heat in there so that it can then start running and then you get your warmth in your engine and you're away, everything's happy days. And that's where ether comes in because ether will ignite like that whereas diesel won't. So once you've got that, as I said, you're away. But you've got to do it in small amounts. This is the whole key to it, small amounts. Otherwise you'll start hearing about the horror stories we'll talk about in a minute. The other thing is, when you take an engine like we have done, out of storage, uh, I've been stood there for 12 years, little 3,000, or if you've done an in-frame rebuild out in the field, not in a test house, not in a factory, you know, and you've got fuel lines to prime all up, get all the air out, sometimes you can then fit it all up, get all the air out, give her a turn and she'll go, not a problem. Sometimes though, you just can't get that air out. You'll crack injectors, you'll do, and you just, you're out in the field, so you, you know, uh, you, you can't pressurize the whole system and stuff like that. You just can all you want is for the engine just to pick up for a couple of revolutions, draw it through, get it going. Everything going, you know, because like the 3000 doesn't have a lift pump on the side, not a, you know, a handle. So you just want it to draw and go. And that again is where ether, just give you that little bit, get it going, and you're away. People say, oh, I wouldn't do that. What I'd do is I'd just keep turning it. Just put a big battery on and just keep turning it. Yeah, I've seen what happens when you do that. I've seen a couple of starters just burn out. I've seen a ring gear stripped on a Massey with a guy doing that. And other than that, you're also just dumping unburnt fuel into the cylinders. If that's not firing, so it's not hot enough, and you aren't getting ignition, just dumping diesel in. And that could be just as bad, because if it does catch, you can get a big detonation. The other thing is that just washes down the side of the balls into the sump. You put diesel in the sump. It's not good. Get it going, get it started, and then you're away. And that's it, happy days. So as I said, out of storage, in-frame rebuilds, that can be, can be an advantage there. But again, it's like everything else. Use it when you need to, use it in moderation. And that's the biggest problem. Because you'll see people, you know, and that's a white, lovely. Others will stand it. Then you start hearing it knocking and banging because, as I said, because it's so volatile, you're getting pre detonation in here. And as it's trying to come up, it's exploding early and pushing it back down. And it's running the other way. That's when you can start getting horror stories. That's when you can start putting a hole in the piston. You can start cracking liners, bending con rods. But it can happen only because of, you know, misuse. So, let's have a look then at some of the myths and when you shouldn't be using it. Failure to start, reluctance to start and heaters. Well, you should never use ether combined with heaters. If your heaters are working, you should never use it because you will get a big detonation. Just not a good idea, all right? You know, which brings us to, if you've got heaters, why isn't it starting? Is it the heaters or is it something else? Why are you using Easy Start? Why are you using Ether? You've got heaters. I was reluctant to start. I always used to. It just takes longer to wind over these days. So we found if we give a little sniff of Easy Start, you know, start and fluid, she's away. Failure to start, well, don't, that don't go. But if we give it some Ether, that'll run. Well, all these things, right? Something's changed. Failure to start, but it started yesterday. Oh yeah, but she didn't start today. Well, if she doesn't start as well as it used to, or the heaters don't seem to be working, or it hasn't started at all, just won't start, you've got an issue. So why don't you stop and investigate? See what's wrong. Now and do that, that will do. Do that. Don't then turn round and say, you yeah, well, like got addicted. Trouble with that old start and food, they get addicted to it. No, they don't get addicted to it. If it's a, an engine that's, you know, well maintained and runs fine, little squirts of easy start, ether, start and fluid, 
on a cold, real cold day, or when you brought out of storage, or you know, in-frame rebuild, won't damage it. It's a good engine. It's not a human being. It doesn't know, you know, all the thing on the dick. That's just a load of bollocks. Just because it's just down to laziness, incompetence, and neglect. You didn't address the problem in the first place. When it didn't start, you didn't address that problem. You just thought, well, I'll just, you know, I'll use this stuff. It's a lot easier. That'll solve all my problems. I'll do a rebuild in a can. No, it won't. It won't improve it. So, like I say, that's, that's just that's such a load of shite, that is. It doesn't get addicted. It's because you haven't done anything about it. You haven't addressed the original problem. And then you say, you get the thick thing is, um, people say about, oh, you've got to keep it turning before you spray any in. No, you haven't. Oh, you have, because otherwise, one cylinder gets all of it. Yeah, that's how it works. You know, we're not talking the sixes and your eights and whatever, but just stick to a four, all right? You have a induction, you've got your compression, your power, your exhaust. They're not all on induction. All right, so getting it turning and spray, it doesn't just go in one cylinder and go, well, hang on a minute, I'll just wait for the next cylinder just draw that. It'll go into whatever cylinder is in, you know, on the induction stroke at that time. That's how it works. The thing is, you should always put it in, in moderation, again, little two squirts, then you can start it, start it turning, and you'll just hear it and you can give it two more squirts. By the time it's worked its way through the air filter, through the trunk and into the manifold and into that cylinder that's on the induction stroke, it's diluted anyway. Two little squirts, there's nothing, it's just atomized and there's hardly anything in it, but it's enough just to give you that bit of heat and get it going. You go sometimes have to take it off right at the source on the manifold. And in that case, then yeah, give it a bit of a turn. Get it turning if you want. But again, only one cylinder is going to take it in, the one that's on the induction stroke. But, if on that induction stroke, all you've done is that, all right, not a problem, that'll take that, little bit of heat, and that's away. It's when people stand there, and they'll go, now don't start it yet. Give it a go. And that's when it goes clunk, and it locks, and you can hear it. Or you get a big pre-detonation and it explodes. That's when you can start cranking your pistons. That's when you start splitting your liners, doing all the damage. Yes, it will do that. It will do that if you're that stupid. All right? So you can give it the two squirts into there because by the time that's drawn down and you've turned that key, that's it. That, that engine's turning anyway. And then on that induction stroke, it'll take in the, the diluted atomized one into one cylinder. Yes, of course it will. That's how it works. And then you'll hopefully get your heat because that'll ignite, and then you're away. It's all about moderation. A little squirt, that's what you want, I'm saying. Some manufacturers had it, so you had to do the ether injection before you even turned the engine. You just press the button, that would just allow a shot in, and then you could go. Others, as I said, they would have it sort of electrically done, so uh, you couldn't do it until the ignition was uh, turning. What that was to do was to stop people believe it or not, that were going along during the day, they'd been running all morning, and they wanted a bit more power, so they'd push the ether in. It was to stop that happening. Then you got, you say, you got manufacturers in the end, such as GM, with their, like the 6.5 and 6.2, some of them had stickers on saying, do not use ether on this engine. And it wasn't because it was detrimental to the engine, it was because people were overdoing it. They, you know, just couldn't moderate, you know, moderate themselves. They couldn't just give it two little squirts in cold weather if it needed. They would stand there dumping it in. And then they were cracking heads and stuff like that. And GM were having to pick up the bill and just said, do you know what? If you can't be trusted to use ether sensibly, then we're saying no ether at all. So again, it's down to people. And like I say, you know, if you do it right, the old ether bunny, that could be your friend. If you use it in the right conditions, call it what you like. Bill Cosby party gas. Cosby's consent in a can. The thing is, don't use too much of it. Once you start seeing him going like that, <laughs> that's too late.
that's the thing really you've got to remember. Cold start, yeah. Storage, rebuild, in frame rebuilds, yeah, sensible. Small amounts, all in moderation. Failure to start, no. Find out what's wrong with it. Left reluctant to start, no. Find out what's wrong with it. Well, the heaters aren't working. Oh, good. Find out what's wrong with them. Sort it. You're not going to solve the issues today by squirting that in it, and then all of a sudden that'll just cure it. That's going to, you know, stick your new set of rings and liners in. It doesn't happen like that. If you want to see another guy that understands an engine, even though he makes sure he doesn't, check out old peg leg on zip ties and bar supplies. That guy, he's in the depth of the Canadian winter, and he gets old Fords, Chevys, and Dodge trucks to run when it's like minus 30. And he's a big lover of the ether. He's double cannon them. He's using brake cleaner and everything. Just try to kill him. And all things still keep going. And that just proves the point that you got to be doing something absolutely catastrophic to get an engine, you know, to eventually explode with ether or whatever. It does happen. It can happen. We've spoke about that. But you've got to try hard, and he really does. We've got lots coming up. You know that. We've got the three thousand to get moving. Uh, see if it all runs and moves and whatever and drives, and we can get it cleaned and then move up to the other yard. Um, we've got the 8100, got to do the cab interior, get that put in there, uh, and then service it and do all the stuff on that, uh, plus everything else. There's plenty of variety for everyone, there's something for everyone, that's what it's all about. It's all about learning and sharing uh, knowledge and experience. Um, so don't forget to comment, don't forget to like, because YouTube are big into that, so give this video a like please, much appreciated. I better go and get something done. So uh, until the next one, do well. <laughs>